acute periapical abscess synonyms for this condition are acute abscess or acute alveolar abscess or acute dental alveolar abscess or acute radicular abscess definition yeah, an acute alveolar abscess is an inflammatory reaction to pulpal infection and necrosis characterized by rapid onset spontaneous pain tenderness to the tooth to pressure pus formation and eventual swelling of associated tissue the key points here uh, noted are inflammatory reaction to pulpal infection and characterification or rapid onset spontaneous pain tenderness of the tooth to pressure and pus formation definitely uh, there is pus formation that's why we called abscess and eventual swelling of the associated tissue why it is uh, swelling is present because of the accumulation of the pus so um, it is the definition and what are the causes the causes for the uh, this condition is trauma chemical irritation mechanical irritation and bacterial invasion of the dead pulp tissue here we have to understand that the pulp tissue is solidly enclosed and no drainage is possible and the infection continues to extend in the direction of least resistance that is through the apical foramen and there be involves the periodontal ligament and periradicular bone because there is no drainage for the pus so uh, that's why it is accumulated in the peri periodontal ligament and periradicular bone area so why it is formed next moving on to symptoms the first symptoms may be is tenderness of the tooth and a severe patient had a history of severe throbbing pain with the swelling of the overlying tissue and tooth become mobile these are the important symptoms if left unattended the infection may progress to chronic apical abscess wherein the contained pus may break through here to form a sinus tract usually open in the labial or buccal mucosa if left untreated it may produce sinus tract in acute cases mostly there is no sinus tract is present so swelling is usually seen in the adjacent tissue close to the affected tooth when the swelling becomes extensive the resulting cellulitis may distort the patient's appearance so if we untreated it may progress into cellulitis then patient's appearance appearance is affected these are the important symptoms so we have to understand that tenderness of the tooth and severe throbbing pain with the swelling of the overlying tissue and tooth become mobile the tissue at the surface of the swelling appears taut and inflamed pus starts to form beneath it such liquefaction liquefaction is the result of the activity of proteolytic enzymes that is trypsin and cathepsin it is very important and um, how the sinus tract uh, are formed the surface tissue become distended from the pressure of the underlying pus finally rupture from this pressure and lack of resistance caused by continual liquefaction the pus may extrude through a tiny opening this opening is called a uh, sinus tract so which becomes large with uh, larger with the time or from two or more openings uh, it uh, depends on the degree of the softening of the tissues and on the amount of the pressure from the contained pus so these are the localized symptoms of the acute periapical abscess then moving on to systemic what are the systemic uh, reactions patient may appear pale irritable and weakened from pain and loss of sleep as well as absorption of septic product in milder cases slight rise in temperature that is 90 to 100 degree fahrenheit and severe cases 102 to 103 degree fahrenheit here patient uh, had a history of fever and accompanied with chill chills and um, manifest it if orally by coated the coated tongue and full breath and patient may complain of headache and malaise next moving on to clinical note we have to remember this point while attending the patients that is if maxillary anterior tooth especially cuspids are involved swelling involving the upper lip and extend to one or both of the eyelids so upper lip and uh, one or both the eyelids and maxillary posterior teeth are involved swelling involve the cheek and it uh, distort the facial appearance and uh, man if mandibular anterior teeth are uh, affected then swelling involving the lower lip and chin if it is severe involving the neck also in mandibular posterior tooth swelling of the cheek occur if it is very severe it extend to ear and lower border of the 
jaw and involving the submaxillary region so here in submaxillary region we have if uh, pain is present we have to check the mandibular posterior teeth are affected or not so uh, these are the clinical points we have to remember and how will you diagnose this condition uh, so we have to uh, check uh, clinical examination and uh, take the history from the patient it's very important in early stages it may difficult to locate the tooth because of the absence of clinical signs and presence of diffuse annoying pain in acute uh, alveolar abscess initially there is diffuse pain uh, pain is not uh, uh, localizing so we have to uh, examine properly and the tooth easily located when the infection has progressed to the point of periodontitis and extrusion of the tooth so initially uh, we don't know what is uh, uh, which tooth is affected and later uh, later the tooth is uh, confirmed because of the apical involvement in radiograph it's mainly there is no um uh, no radial lucency involving the apical area of the um, root because it is a acute condition acute condition we have to remember that an affected tooth showing a cavity or defective restoration or slight widening of the pedial space it is very important slight widening of the pedial space a diagnosis is confirmed by ept that is electric pulp test and con uh, and by thermal test the affected pulp is uh, necrotic so it is not respond to ept and application of cold so it is necrotic in acute alveolar abscess the tooth is necrotic so it does not respond to ept or application of cold it is very infirm, very uh, important and it is a confirmatory test for uh, this uh, condition this picture showing extra oral swelling in acute alveolar abscess see the swelling this picture showing the X-ray of acute alveolar abscess in mesial side of the root. There is mild radio lucency involving the pedial space. So mild widening of pedial space. This is the classical example of acute alveolar abscess. Differential diagnosis: acute alveolar abscess should be differentiated from periodontal abscess. So in periodontal abscess. Accumulation of pus along the root surface of the tooth originates from infection in the supporting structure. So, the pus is uh, accumulated. Where it is accumulated? That is along the root surface of the tooth. And it is associated with the periodontal pocket and manifested by swelling and mild pain is present. So, pus may, if uh, pus extrude from the uh, sulcus definitely it is periodontal abscess so pus may come from the sulcus area and main important point is here that pulp is vital in acute alveolar abscess the pulp is necrotic so ept shows vital tooth in periodontal abscess and uh, no response in acute periapical acute periapical abscess this is the main uh, differential uh, point in periodontal abscess with acute alveolar abscess next moving on to bacteriology in bacteriology concentration of organism is unusually large most commonly streptococci and staphylococci are generally recovered in this condition next moving on to histopathology here the marked infiltration of the polymorphonuclear leukocytes and the rapid accumulation of inflammatory exudate in response to an active infection distend the periodontal ligament and thereby elongate the tooth so sudden accumulation of pmnrs polymorphonuclear leukocytes and rapid accumulation of inflammatory exudate that's why the pedial space is elongated if it is continuous uh, continuous it leads to mobile the mobility of the tooth so if the process continues periodontal fibers will separate and the tooth will become mobile and although some monocellular uh, mononuclear cells may be found the chief inflammatory cells are polymorphonuclear leukocytes it is very important polymorphonuclear leukocytes are very commonly occur in this condition and progressively the root apex is resolved 
and is more and more of the polymorphic glucose is die in the battle with the microorganism so pus is formed microscopically an empty spaces or spaces where separation has occurred surrounded by polymorphic nuclear and some mononuclear cells so the root canal itself may appear to be devoid of tissue and instead clumps of microorganism and debris may be observed and treatment for acute alveolar abscess it is the treatment for uh, cellulitis and uh, endonotic flare ups also first step is access opening because it reduces the pain and next step is local anesthesia in local anesthesia as the pulp is necrotic local anesthesia is not needed routinely in fact local anesthesia is frequently contraindicated in acutely inflamed tissue because its infiltration does not anesthetize the tissue so we have to remember if patient complains of swelling the la is not working for the patient acutely inflamed tissue has a localized ph that is acidic in spite of body's natural buffering action so local anesthetics are effective in tissues with a more alkaline ph so this is uh, this is the reason why uh, anesthetics is not working in the uh, pus because in the pus that is ph is acidic normally la work in alkaline ph the next insinuating a needle and forcing anesthetic solution into a acutely infected and swollen area it may increase the pain and spread the infection into a facial spaces so we should not give the la or uh, put the needle into the acutely infected area so it may cause the it may cause uh, increase the pain and spread the infection into the facial spaces and conduction anesthesia may be administered conduction anesthesia may be administered to reduce the pain of the acute alveolar abscess mandibular block or an infraorbital block can be used effectively in some pulp vitality persist cases and most of the pain that occurs during access cavity preparation is caused by tooth movement due to the vibration of the high speed burr how we uh, stable uh, so we have to stabilize the tooth with finger pressure so the penetration of the pulp chamber will be painless it is the important point we have to remember and test cavity is very significant in treating teeth with acute alveolar abscess so the test cavity initiate therapy quickly as painless penetration into the pulp is possible so it also identifies any remaining vital pulp that may require anesthesia in test cavity it is the tool used in this conditions next moving on to techniques there are uh, first in access opening this uh, what are the steps to be followed first step is rubber dam isolation and next moving to access opening is completed painlessly by bracing the tooth with finger pressure and pulp chamber is irrigated and uh, forcing the solution or debris into the periradicular tissues should be avoided and root canal orifices are located using the number 8 10 or 15 kf or reamer as an explorer each root canal instrument is within the one mm of the root apex and irrigation and debridement are continued while enlarging the root canal so normal root canal procedures are followed and purulent exudent escapes into the chamber that indicates the root canal is patent and draining so patient relieves uh, patient relieves some quickly from the pain when periapical abscess does not drain through the root canal effectively especially when it is occurred the posterior tooth root are curved so the clinician should use the sterile pre curved iso number 8 or 10 patency k5 should be used so it go beyond the apical constriction to initiate the drainage if the abscess does not drain through the canal in spite of creating canal patency so in this condition we should be clean and shaped to facilitate the placement of a suitable intracanal medicament that is calcium hydroxide if it is uh, draining not properly we have to use this canal medicaments that is calcium hydroxide if there is excessive drainage of blood or pus through the canal the clinician should 
patiently allow the drainage to take place and irrigate the canals copiously so we have to wait until the pus uh, completely drain in such cases we have to place the some amount of cotton on the oxus open pulp chamber and make the patient to wait for draining the pulp pus and then we have to clean the or irrigate the canals and uh, place the calcium hydroxide medicament and uh, suitable temporary restoration that is IRM or cavity are placed placed uh, over it and advise the patient to use hot saline rinses for 3 minutes each hour it is very important after the uh, uh, after the abscess drainage and prescribe the suitable analgesics for the patient uh, for pain re relieving an initial treatment and antibiotics uh, also given and when symptoms are subsided root canals are open and reassess before completing the root canal therapy so the important point nowadays uh, we are not leaving the teeth open between appointments is not recommended because it poor the prognosis so leaving the tooth open the for drainage causes salivary and bacteriological contamination and increases risk of adverse reaction so we cannot open uh, we, we are not leaving the open cavity and next uh, there is lot of uh, techniques are also uh, use, used or uh, incision and drainage are, uh, is used and antibiotics uh, lot of uh, lots of antibiotics are given and needle aspiration trepanation and decompression techniques these are the other techniques used in this condition here we uh, we know the important uh, technique used in acute periapical abscesses that is access opening 